Hey, hey, play that track, Holy Spirit Rain. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm nothing without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit present in this building tonight, it's just a bunch of people gathering. We're just people jumping up and down listening to music. But when the Holy Spirit is present, the Bible says that He is our counselor, He is our comfort, He is our helper. And I want to let you guys know maybe you're in need of a helper. Maybe you're in need of comfort. Maybe you need a counselor. I want to tell you there's a friend whose name is the Holy Spirit. You don't need a, 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 a doctor's theology certificate to get to know him. You don't need a student child to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's not looking for the perfect people. The Holy Spirit is looking for someone who's hungry, someone who is, 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 is ready and willing just to say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come on, how many of us know that when you go through life, sometimes life can get unbearable. Sometimes we go through situations and circumstances, but I thank God He didn't leave us as orphans. Jesus said it is better that I go because there's some greater who is coming, and that is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of conviction. You want to know why I wake up and I want to live holy every day? It's the power of the Holy Ghost. You want to know why you keep people up here testifying about how God changed their life? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, y'all thought I wasn't going to read up my Bible. Oh, y'all thought we're one of these Christians who just come up here, jumping up and down, because we got our hats on, we don't know the Bible. But if you open your Bible to the book of Titus chapter 3, verse 5 onward, it talks about the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And can we pull that up? I don't know what's going on with the media team, but I'm just going to let it rip. Holy Spirit, had your way right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just soften every heart and heart. Father, we know that people come here maybe out of curiosity. Maybe they came here to hear some music. Maybe they came here for free sausages. But I pray that they don't leave without a dose of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray that you would break the hearts of hearts. That they will receive what you have for them. See, I don't believe it's an accident when you came here. Hey, cut the track for a minute. Cut the track for a minute. We're going to roll. We'll follow the Holy Ghost. See, I believe it was by divine appointment. Some of you, you weren't supposed to be here tonight. Some of you, you guys could have been locked up. Some of you guys should be drunk at some house party. There's so many different places you could have been tonight. But it's not by accident that you're here in this building listening to me minister to you about the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this, He saved us not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His mercy. Someone say mercy. That's my wife's name. Everyone say, high mercy. mercy. See, I needed so much mercy, God made me marry a woman who mercy. <laughs> That's a joke I like to say. But we all need mercy. But we're saved according to His mercy. So it's not about your works. See, church attendance is good. But it's not about you coming to church that makes you right with Jesus. It's not about, you know, taking it off. I went to church this weekend. Oh, it's Easter weekend. It's like, you know, let me go. You know, get that feel good, get that hit, you know, praise the Lord, get my frills on and then I get straight back to the vomit. But the Bible says it's not by our works, but it's according to His mercy. Amen. See, you've got to understand, there's nothing that you can do to buy your way into heaven. There's nothing you can do that can make you right standing with God. It's only by the grace and mercy of God. And that is what the Easter weekend is about. It's about for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever shall believe in Him will not perish. He didn't say, look, if you believe in Him, maybe you might perish. No, the scriptures are clear said you will not. The question is, do you believe in Him? That's the question. Because everyone wants to know Jesus. Y'all know Jesus, the baby at Christmas. I know Jesus, you know, that they talk about on Easter. But do you know Him? Do you know him the way that you should know him? Do you have a real living relationship with the creator of the universe? Or do you just come to church, lift your hands, sing hallelujah? Hey listen, I know, I know this, I might step on some toes tonight, but the gospel I preach, let it offend you. Let it offend you. I'm not here to please people. If I wanted to please people, believe me, this is the last thing I'll be doing. But I'm here because I stand before the living God and He will judge me according to everything that I say. 
And I want to give you guys no excuse. That if one day you stand before the Father, you can't say, God, but no one told me. God, but no one told me about your grace. No one told me about your love. God's going to say, you remember when you went to that crazy concert? And I'm talking about smoking demons. Do you remember when they were jumping up and down, making you scream, win, win, win? And he's going to say, hey, do you remember when he preached about the power of the Holy Spirit? About the grace and the mercy of God? Come on, if you believe that, you need to shout him out. Like I said, guys, this ain't a funeral. You want to scream hallelujah. If you want to shout amen, if you want to lift your hands up, if you want to do a dance, clap your hands. Listen, you can do what you want. As long as it's what you keep a hold of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, do what you want to get one of the things before I kick you out. But the Bible says, everyone who believes in him will not perish. Can we go back to, to Titus chapter 3, verse 5? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's go to verse 6. Verse 6. It says, This spirit he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And verse 7. So that having been justified by His grace, we may become heirs of the hope of eternal life. How do we receive this Holy Spirit? Through the cross of Jesus. Amen. So you've got to understand the Gospel is simple. The, the, the message of Christ is not complicated. Like I said to you, it doesn't matter if you finish school. Hey, I'll bet you got some school certificate. I'll be shut up with you. God doesn't, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the poor. Some of you need to know that by now. Maybe you counted yourself out. Maybe you said, why would God love someone like me? Why would God's mercy come and reach me? God doesn't know me. You don't know what I've been up to. I want to tell you, God knows everything what you've been doing. The Bible says he knows your thoughts. God is looking at your heart. It's not about the outside. It's not about the outward appearance. It's not about a formula of how we worship God. It's not about a suit and tie. See, sometimes men, we come with our theology and we come with our man-made traditions. But the Bible says a broken spirit and a contrite heart I will not turn away. Amen. All it is is this. You want to know the key to getting the Holy Spirit? You get on your knees, man. Amen. And you say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, come fill me again. God, forgive me. I care about your mercy, Lord. If you can forgive them, then I know that you can forgive me. See, the Bible says that our spirit was poured out through Jesus Christ. That's the cross of Jesus, man. That's the cross of Calvary. You see, they didn't even take Jesus' life from him. The Bible says when he was on the cross, he breathed his last breath and he said, Father, I'll commit my spirit into your hands. They didn't take his life from him. He let them put him on the cross. He let them, you know, he, what the Bible says, that one he shows to be killed. He was bruised by our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was wounded for our transgression. You've got to understand that it was necessary for Jesus to die on the cross because there was no other way. Because the very fact every other way wouldn't work. You can't go through priests, you can't go through judges, you can't go through prophets, you can't go through no man. There's no way. That's why God in his loving kindness, God in his grace and mercy said, hold on. Let me bring my son, my one and only begotten son. You gotta understand that this was foreordained. This was foreordained. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, God had a plan for salvation. He said to Eve, and the seed, the, 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 the seed of the woman's hill will bruise the serpent's head. What's he talking about? He's talking about the cross of Jesus. And the Bible says that if that had known, if the devil, the enemies, if they had known putting Jesus on the cross was going to make him victorious, they wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't. You read throughout the Gospels. Jesus Christ said, I'm the good shepherd. I lay my life down for my sheep. He said, I leave the 99 to go looking for the one. Maybe you're that one tonight. I want to tell you, Jesus is looking for you. And he wants to bring you home. He wants to have a loving and real relationship with you. Maybe you have doubts. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you're a bit skeptic. And that's okay. Hey, it's good to ask questions. The Bible says to study yourself to be approved. 
But the best place to be is, like you said, on your knees in Holy Spirit. If you are who you say you are, and just be real with Him. God, there's some doubt in my mind. The church that I see in the world isn't the same as the church I see in the world. I've seen some pastors do some nasty things. I've seen people go to church and they're filled with all kinds of evil. You know what that does to people who don't know Christ? They don't want to know your Jesus. The only gospel you know is the gospel you live. Amen. Quote scriptures all you want. But God is looking at your heart. Jesus said this to the Pharisee. Or Jesus said this in one of his sermons. You have heard that if you sleep with a woman, you've committed adultery, right? And everyone was like, I ain't sleep with no one's wife. Cool. <laughs> and then he says, but if you even look at a woman and lust after her, you've committed adultery in your heart. And everyone went, oh, hold up. Hold up, Jesus, because then we're all guilty, right? Let's be real. We're all guilty. Y'all be y'all looking at me like you look at looked at someone with lust. <laughs> Every line spurred out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus was talking about the heart. They said to Jesus, hey, your disciples, they don't wash their hands before they eat. They don't keep in the tradition, the laws. They don't keep in the man-made rules. Jesus said it's not the outside of a cup, cup that makes it dirty, but the inside of a cup. Are you with me? Amen. Jesus said, all things, because it's not what goes into a man's mouth that makes him unclean, but what comes out of a man's mouth. For all things come from the heart. Wicked, perversion, lying, it all starts in the heart. And maybe that's you. Hey, maybe you're plugged into a church. That, that's good. But how is your heart before God? If God was to check your heart, is your heart right with God? What secrets do you have hidden in your heart? You can hide before men, you can hide before people, but you cannot hide from the Spirit of God. The Bible says God's eyes are looking to and from on earth for a loyal heart. God said, I will take that heart of stone and give you my heart of flesh. You want to know why the number one reason why people can never receive Jesus is called pride. It's called pride, man. Because I know it was. I know too much. Let me sit in peace. I want Jesus for the good things. I want God to bless my life. I want God to fix my marriage. I want God to fix my relationship. I want God on a Sunday. But I don't want to live for Him every other day. Jesus Christ died for you. Right. He didn't die for you so you can live beaten, broken, busted and disgusted. He died so you can have a victorious life. He died so you can look sin dead in the face and say, you know what? I have power that I ain't going to sin no more. But you can't do it in your own strength. You want to know why people try to go to church each week? They try going through, you know, rituals and traditions and they find themselves falling flat on their face. Let me tell you something. It's because you're trying to do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own strength. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. It takes a supernatural power. How are you supposed to love your enemies? How are you supposed to love someone who does you wrong? You think you're just going to turn the other cheek? And when they slap that cheek, what cheek you give them next? Huh? It takes a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive the way that Christ forgives. It takes a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to love people the way that Christ loves people. Can I be honest with you? It's not easy living for Christ. See, I'm not going to give you guys a gospel that says, come give your life to Christ and everything is going to be okay. That's not what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you if you come to Christ, it is 
don't know what your relationship with him looks like. I don't know what your heart looks like, but I came to tell you the good news. That Jesus Christ is still looking for you. That Jesus Christ wants a personal, real living relationship with you. The problem is we need to die to ourselves. That's the problem. We want God for what he can do for us. I hear a lot of preachings on, on, on the internet. They preach a self-centered Christianity. How can the gospel benefit me? How can I get God to fit in my schedule? How can I get God to fit in my life? The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but the life I now live. It's faith in the Son of God. See, coming to Christ, Jesus said this in the book, in the book of Luke chapter 9, I'm pretty sure it is. He said, whoever wants to follow me, what do you say? He said, deny yourself. He said, pick up your cross and deny yourself. Because the biggest enemy that's going to take you to hell is yourself. The most powerful prayer you can say is, God, save me from me. Save me from me. Save me from my doubts and my unbelief. Save me for every time I try to take control. Every time I try and do it my way. You gotta sit there and you know the song, Jesus take the wheel, take it from my life. Hey. Oh, but you guys want that. I can buy myself flowers. <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta buy yourself flowers. Jesus Christ died for you. You're looking for someone to buy you flowers? But that's why some people are so messed up. You know what? Because they're listening to the wrong things. There's a lot of music out there that's the demonic influence. Some of y'all probably know about the Travis Scott concert. That's just one of many. You ever wonder why you get a bunch of young kids, get them on some drugs, play a bit of drill music, all of a sudden everyone's a driller. Let's go urchin cats. All of a sudden everyone's out there looking for the next person to drill. Don't worry, I'm working my way out. That's what the younger guys. Then you have the guys who go to the clubs. Brother talks about that when I'm talking about it. Have a couple of shots. All of a sudden they start playing the baby. And all of a sudden you figure a player. Now you're standing at the bar thinking, yeah, man. And you're back with everything, hey man. Let me go get let me go talk to this girl. You see the influence behind the music. You gotta understand, man, that the devil does not rest. He comes around like a roaring lion. That's what we preach and beat. Because a lot of people they won't come to church. But they will scroll through the social media. You just you just take a moment and you sit on the train to work. Everybody's like this. Earphones in. Next time you see someone say, hey, check out where you preach with holes in the <laughs> And I'm trying to plug myself, I'm trying to plug into Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why we do what we do. But that's the good news of Christ. We sinned. We fell away from God. We turned our back on Him. We've all lied, we've all cheated, we've all taken something that we shouldn't have. We're all guilty. And if you stand before God, because the Bible says, it is appointed unto every man to die once and face the judgment seat of Christ. Death is a part of life. But why is it we're so afraid to die? I'm asking to get shot. <laughs> but why is it we're so afraid to die? Why is it when it comes to death, it brings a funny feeling in the room? Why is it everything's all good when it comes to air madness? Let's glamorize, drill and everything, then all of a sudden, all these death break out in the news and no one wants to... I didn't share that. I didn't condone that. You see, God is looking at your hearts tonight. He's looking at your hearts tonight. And for some of you guys, man, your hearts have been broken. Some of you, your heart have, you know, has been torn to pieces. Some of you guys got holes in your hearts and you're giving your hearts to all the wrong people. You give your heart to all the wrong things. You would suffer for relationships. You would suffer for family members who just use you. What? Hey, can I borrow some money and you don't see them again? And then the moment they call you back up, that's my brother, man, I've got to help him out. But he paid you back the last time. Come on, we suffer for 
for all the wrong reasons. But what about suffering for Jesus? Amen. The moment someone talks about you in church, you're like, I'm not going back to church. You're quick to run away. It's an honor and a privilege to take the lashes on the back for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whoever partakes of my suffering will also partake of my glory. So I want to get back to talking about where, what would happen if you were to die tonight? If tonight was your last night, let me ask you guys a real question. If you knew the day that you were going to die, how would you live your life? And be honest, how would you live your life? If you knew that next week you were going to die, how would you live your life? Would you just go waste it? Or would you make the most of it? Would you say, Mom, Dad, forgive me. I don't want to argue no more. Would you be, would you be turning your, your, your lost, you, would you be trying to mend your broken relationships in your life? Trying to make peace with everyone, because you know, the Bible says, teach me to number my days. See, we've all got a number. We're all going to die one day. My question to you is, are you prepared? Are you prepared to die? Let's be real. If tonight was your last night, if next week was your last week, and you were to die and you stand before God, can you say that I know, that I know, that I know, that I'm right standing with you, Lord? And I'm not talking about, you know, going to church. Even though I can die, you should go to church. Let me hear what I'm not saying. But going to church doesn't save you. You need to get on your knees and have a real relationship with Jesus and say, Holy Spirit, if you are who you say you are, come and fill me. Come and fill my heart. Because when you stand before God, you stand alone. And you've got an answer for everything. But if you put your faith and hope in Jesus Christ and you're washed by His blood, you know what happens when you stand before God? He doesn't see your sin. He sees Jesus. You want to know why? Because the Bible says, well, your life should be hidden in Christ. When you come and give your life to Christ, let me be real with you. It's not about you no more. It's not about you anymore. It's about Him. It's about giving Him the glory. It's about what He's done. Not about what you can do. So I want every eye closed, every head bowed in this place. Maybe you're sitting here with a broken heart. Maybe you're sitting here and you feel far from God. Maybe your life isn't where it should be. We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to judge you. But we're here to give you the goodness and the love and grace of Jesus Christ to let you know that there's still room at the cross for you. That today, you can be made right with God. Today, maybe you came out of curiosity. I don't know what the reason why you came, but I want to let you know that you can encounter Jesus. You can come and know Jesus. And I want to finish up with this. The Bible says when Jesus was laying on the cross, he was crucified between two criminals. And both criminals were mocking him. They said, if you're Jesus, the Son of God, why don't you save yourself and save us? You raised Lazarus from the dead. Why don't you save yourself? And they mocked him. They beat him. They flogged him. They made him carry his cross of Calvary. And then all of a sudden, the he says to the other criminal on the left, he says, you and I, we deserve this punishment. But this man is innocent. And you know what he said to Jesus? I love this passage, because this is the gospel. This is the gospel. He looks at Jesus and he says, remember me. Remember me. This was a man. He was a murderer. He was a thief. He was the worst of the worst. Yet he looked at Jesus. I don't know what it was. How the Holy Spirit convicted him. Maybe it's because when Jesus was dying, he said, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. See, even as Jesus was on the cross, he was still praying for you and I. He was still speaking forgiveness over.
can cancel every lie of the enemy. I'll cancel every assignment of the darkness that gets your mouth to mind. You are forgiven. Don't let the devil watch you. He said, remember me. Jesus didn't say to him, hey. Jesus didn't say, hey, now go to church. Didn't say, hey, now go get baptized. He didn't say, hey, now go to an all right prayer meeting. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Those things you should do. It's commitment to discipleship. It's necessary for your Christian growth. But Jesus said, today, you will die with me in paradise. That's how simple the gospel is. When your heart connects with your mouth, when your heart connects with your mouth, when you mean what you say and you say what you mean, and you say, God, remember me. Remember me. And when the devil tries to remind you of your sin, and tries to remind you of why he shouldn't remember you, the blood of Jesus speaks louder than that. So every eye closed, every head bowed. If your heart is not where it should be, if you were to die tonight and you weren't going to heaven because we're all guilty of sin and maybe you haven't met Jesus Christ your Lord. Maybe you made him your Savior, but you don't know him as Lord. You see, he died as the Savior, but he resurrected as Lord. I want to give this opportunity to you. If there's something inside you that is stirring, if your spirit is stirring and your heart feels like it's being torn in pieces, I want you to lift your hand up on the count of three. One, two, three. If that's you, put your hand straight up. I see you, sister. I see you, brother. If that's you, be honest. The Spirit of God is searching at this place. And He's looking at your heart. Come and encounter the living God. If that's you right now, I want you to lift your hand straight in the air. Every eye bow. I see you, my brother. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. If that's you, I'm going to do something now. I'm going to call you to step forward. I'm going to call you to step forward. Make this walk of faith. If you've got your, your hand in the air, if there's a brother or sister around you, you know, walk with them. Bring them up to the altar right here. Bring them up to the altar. The Bible says that if you are ashamed of me and you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. 